There's no such thing as a team. You live and die alone. Do you see what you're doing to him? You're making him upset. How important is this to you, huh? I don't even cry, look at me. You're about to make tears come out of my face. I'm sorry, okay, this isn't what I wanted. Who am I supposed to build ramps for? Who am I supposed to build ramps for now? Welcome back to Thinking Critical, this is Wes. And if you're not on social media, you may have missed this, but you know, in the June solicitations, Robert Venditti is no longer on the Justice League title. He's been re replaced by a new creator, and he went on to, to Twitter and basically explained that his dream project came up, and he had to abruptly leave Justice League to, to, in order to take that. And with me to talk about some of this, and may, we're going to speculate, this isn't real news, but we're going to talk about some of the things that we think maybe this in, implies, and probably talk about Venditti's run as well, is Dylan from The Real Comic Book Gamer. How you doing, buddy? I've been doing good, man. Good to be back. Yeah, so you know, I know we've both been enjoying Venditti's run. We were we were hoping that he was going to get a nice little, you know, eight, you know, ten issue run. Is I, I thought it was like a trial run, be, you know, before five G uh, starts. Maybe he would have Justice League after that, but apparently he's off the title because something bigger came up. You know, he considered it a dream project. You know, what did what did you initially think? Uh, that that was very surprising. I thought he was gonna stay on Justice League and continue with that and ride that uh, ship out until you know he wasn't able to anymore. But he's got a dream project. Who knows what that is? It could be any number of things. I'm really hoping it's Superman because I don't want Bendis. And you know, with the change of the Dio going away, maybe this could make sense. With the fact that maybe they're like, okay, maybe Superman shouldn't be written by the same guy that's ruining him both books. Let's just you know split it in half. I think that would be awesome. And Venditti's also talked about how. He's a big Superman fan, so I would be excited for that. I really hope it's Superman. So, you know, Venditti is basically my favorite comic book writer, and at DC, he's gotten a couple of, of opportunities. Of course, he replaced Jeff Johnson on Green Lantern, and I, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's a, a tough act to follow, but he put his stamp on the character, uh, especially with his, his Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps, you know, Rebirth series that lasted for 50 issues. I thought that was terrific. Otherwise, you know, besides Justice League, it's it's stuff like Damage, Hawkman, which has been phenomenal, but but maybe not the most high profile character out there. And you know, for him to say that's a dream project, you know, it got my mind percolating, kind of like you did. And I think we can absolutely rule out that it's Green Lantern because he's already worked on that character. Yep. But what other characters are out there that are bigger than Justice League? You know, within the DC universe, of course, the the first name that comes to mind is is Batman, but. I don't really see him working on Batman. It seems like James uh, Tynion is has got his own run going on. I thought it was going to be short initially, but it, it feels like he's he's building for some bigger things. Peter J. Tomasi is doing amazing on Detective Comics. I think everyone's loving that. So I, I don't see them moving him off Detective Comics. Do you think Batman's you know a reasonable expectation? Maybe that's the project. Uh, I highly doubt it because, like you mentioned, like Tynion's just getting started and there's a lot of hype behind titans run like right now like people are really into it tomasi's been so consistent killing it and that creative team is great with him and mankey and doug Wal and uh, brad walker they've been doing fantastic on detective so i doubt they kick him off but like i was saying with superman you know fans don't like uh, superman or action comics the sales aren't good so that i could see that happening especially without the dio safety net um, but yeah, I don't I don't see a reason to do anything with Batman because the sales aren't too bad and the fans love both those books right now. So I don't see a reason to put Venditti on there. And, and I think he would he would absolutely you know kick ass on on a Batman series. But I don't think those are going to be the series. But you mentioned Superman; that's definitely a prime target. Brian Michael Bendis is on you know both titles right now. It, it has not proven to be the windfall that DC expected when they brought him over. It has certainly proven to be. A, a folly to put him on both action comics and Superman. He's basically drugged down both titles. It's a terrible take on the character. Nobody's really enjoying it. So I, I don't know that they would put Venditti on. I don't know if he's high profile enough for the main Superman uh, story arc or the main Superman title, but definitely action comics. I could see being an option. I know you're the Superman fan here, but I, I would love it. Oh, I would too. I think he's writing the Superman Giant right now, which doesn't give him a whole lot to work with because it's like a smaller page count because they have a bunch of filler in stories from back issues that are thrown in there. But he's done a pretty good job with that. I like his Superman and Justice League as well. Um, and yeah, I think he could do a great job with Superman. There's no way he could do worse than what's currently going on. So it's only up from here. And yeah, I think that's uh, they would have to send him somewhere where something's broken. I don't think they would send him somewhere like Batman where everything's working fine. I think they'd have to send him somewhere where it's like, okay, we obviously need a change. 
change here. And it's not really more obvious than with Superman to where something needs to change there. And I think Venditti would be a good fit. All right. So I love how your mind's working because that's how mine's, my mind's working. You know, to me, there are two other characters that fit the profile of a character that would be higher profile than Justice League and in need of savings. One of them being Wonder Woman. But interestingly enough, just this week, it was announced Mariko Tamaki is taking over the Wonder Woman title after Steve Orlando's very brief uh, stay on there while after G. Willow Wilson kind of left abruptly. Now, I think Venditti would do great on Wonder Woman, and that is certainly a high-profile character. That is the most important character at DC Comics in 2020. Wonder Woman 1984 is coming out. The, the brass at AT&T and, and Warner Brothers could not have been happy when they saw Mariko Tamaki going on that series. Who knows? Maybe it had a part in uh, you know Dan Didio's exit because she's not a, an, an exciting you know action-based storyteller. The movie is going to be action-based storytelling. There's going to be no synergy in there. Whereas I think Venditti would would stay true to the character, but tell very compelling stories. What do you think about him on Wonder Woman? I think he'd be a good fit, especially because Wonder Woman's had a rough time as of late. Like ever since, I, I feel like Azrael did a great job with her in the New 52, but since then. There hasn't been anything good. Having Rucka back, he thought he might do something, but he didn't do a whole lot with Rebirth. And then just she's had a rough time. There has you haven't really heard anyone go, you know what's a must-read book right now? Wonder Woman. That hasn't been the case since really the new 52. And so for Vendetti to come on there, I think would be a, a really smart choice. I don't know if they'll do it so if I would love for them to do Wonder Woman, but I don't know if they'll do it considering they did just announce that new writer. Unless maybe they're mm -hmm. like, okay, new writer and kick her off and Venditti now. I don't know if they'll do that. I would be fine with that, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how they'll do that. Another possibility I was thinking of is possibly Nightwing because Nightwing is actually coming back to being Nightwing. I feel like they could have Dan Jurgens wrap, wrap up all the Rick Grace and stuff and then be like, Nightwing's back and here's Venditti, a new creative team with Venditti and whoever the artist would be. And I feel like he's a character that a lot of people have loved for, and I could see that being a dream book for Venditti and a lot of writers. Well, it'd be my dream book. I mean, Nightwing is my second favorite DC hero right after Hal Jordan, and uh, he's just... Nightwing has been unreadable ever since Batman 50. It's been awful. It's been a, you know, it's, it's, it's depressing as a reader. You know, you go in there and I, I stuck with the Lobdell, you know, run too long. And I, I was only on it for five issues. I only got through two issues of Jurgens when he took over and it's like, he, he's not going to be able to fix this. And it, it, you know, obviously I would be over the moon for Robert Venditti on Nightwing, but do you really think that character would profile as, as something higher than justice league? Not something higher than Justice League, but something more uh, interesting to him because he mentioned on his Twitter how the double ship's been kind of killing him and he doesn't like doing a double ship book. And also, like I was saying, Dick Grace is a character that like most writers have a love for. A lot of writers really love Dick Grace. A lot of them uh, grew up with Dick Grace. And, and I feel like that's a character that he could see as a dream book. Again, not, not bigger than Justice League, but something that being a creative writer would be more interesting to him and more appealing to write than Justice League. That's a good point. I don't, I don't think maybe readers of, of today's era realize that uh, the New Teen Titans was like the DC comic book for, for almost a decade. That was their best selling title. And, and Nightwing, you know, Dick Grayson was front and center and he was the leader of that team. So you're probably right that he there might be some some of the older generation that where Nightwing is, is a character that they have a lot of affinity for because of that. Yeah, and also that's how, because how do you get people back into Nightwing? Obviously, Tynan already announced that Nightwing is coming back. No more Rick Grayson. That's that's happening. So you already have some people that have a bad taste around. Even though Dan Jurgens is a great writer, you know this has been lackluster with the Rick Grayson stuff. I don't necessarily blame him. But if you want to get some more like heat into that book, get people more excited, you announce a new creative team, and who will you announce? Someone solid like Venditti. All right, so you got me on board. That would be a great one. So the last you know character that was. I was thinking about, of course, is Aquaman. Kelly Sue DeConnick has been on that um, that series. She replaced Dan Abnett. The sales absolutely tanked the moment she got on there. The stories haven't been compelling, but Aquaman had a billion dollar movie for Warner Brothers. You know, and AT and T is definitely definitely sees that character as important. DC Comics has to see that character as important, and I would imagine Vin Diddy would see that as an opportunity potentially. But I don't know if Aquaman is really the character. That, that maybe he would see as a springboard or, or that huge project that he's been looking for. What do you think about Aquaman? 
Yeah, I would be down for him to write Aquaman, but like you're saying, I don't know if that's something he'd consider a dream project. I haven't met, heard him mention Aquaman, but maybe Aquaman is like one of his favorite characters. I have no clue because Aquaman isn't in his Justice League. Granted, he is kind of dealing with the team that Snyder already put together. Um, so I don't know, but I would be down for him to write it. It's just I have no clue about how Venditti feels about Aquaman. Yeah, so funny enough, I, I did Google up some Robert Venditti DC Comics interviews and and, and not in one of them did he ever mention his dream character or the, the character that he always wanted to write. I was, <laughs> I was like, it's going to be there. <laughs> Dang it. So so it is all up to speculation. And, and you know, I'm, I'm excited. I think it is going to be one of these big characters. Of course, maybe it could be something obscure. Maybe he's always wanted to write the definitive Blue Beetle, you know, comic series. <laughs> series. Who knows? Could be. But imagine that if he wrote a Blue Beetle, like, Booster Gold team-up book, and that was what he always wanted to write. Oh, I, I think he'd knock it out of the park. You know, is there another maybe dormant DC comic hero that maybe people aren't thinking about or I'm not thinking about that that is out there waiting to be revived that people would, like, lose their mind over? Not that people would lose their mind over, but I would, and that's Jonah Hex. Like, he hasn't had a book since the New 52. His book with by Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray was amazing. It got canceled after, like, 30 issues, 31, 32 issues. So good, solid, just didn't sell well because he's not a super popular character. He's appeared in, like, a couple issues since then, but he hasn't had an ongoing series. So for him to be brought back, I'd be ecstatic. I don't know how many other people would be, but I would be very excited. One of my favorite characters in all of comics, and he's been dead for a while now. So to bring him back, give him his own book would be awesome. So you know, just thinking about it, I think the two most likely targets are, are some form of Superman series or Wonder Woman. I think those would be the, the really high-profile, huge projects that he's maybe he's been dreaming about. I do think Aquaman and, and Nightwing, that, now that you brought him up, are, are definitely – in the running, maybe those are the choices. I'm really excited to find out what this project is, you know, for him to leave Justice League. But it is a bummer because I have been reading Justice League. Doug Mankey and um, Aaron Lepresti have been on the art, and I've really enjoyed this Eradicator story. It's good. It really feels like a mid to like slash early 2000s Justice League book. It really feels kind of like I'm reading a bit more of a Grant Morrison's Justice League. It feels like one of those stories. It's very, it's really fun. It's solid. It's nothing that'll knock your socks off or amazing or anything like that, but it's a solid story. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's been great. So my favorite part of it is the weird um, tension between john stewart and batman oh yeah, yeah because whenever it's time to start like doing strategic planning for like a military operation on another planet like stewart just kind of takes over which makes sense because he's in the green lantern corps he's like, they, the head of the green lantern corps it, it, batman certainly doesn't operate really outside of much of uh, gotham but you can tell it, it like rubs him the wrong way and it just it cracks me up especially because how much everyone else is like okay we're f we're cool with john leading us and batman's like wait <laughs> that and batman's not exactly cool with it like everyone else is but yeah that was one of, that's probably the biggest change in his book compared to like snyder's run is how central uh john stewart is and how he's so much more of the tactical leader right now and i thought that was an interesting uh thing that he did with the book and yeah i do like that dynamic of batman being like but i want to be the leader and john just like <laughs> taking lead yeah they're like listen we're on another planet this is a military operation. We're not doing vigilante justice here, Batman. You, you take a back seat. <laughs> <laughs> so that moment with Flash was great on the last issue. Like Flash is really cool. I like I like seeing Barry getting some love. That's the one thing about Venditti that I've always enjoyed. I always feel like he gets to the core of the character and the essence of him. And and he might not go exactly where you thought he would, but it always feels like it stays true to the character. Yeah, and the only thing that's sad about the book is whenever he has to make mentions to what Bendis has done with Superman. Like Bendis, uh, Superman has mentioned multiple times about how he's revealed his identity. And I'm like, oh, each time I read that, I'm like, no. <laughs> but, you know, that's not Venditti's fault. That's what <laughs> did. But it's just sad every time that happens. But that that moment with uh, Batman uh, imagining Alfred was, oh, that was, that was gut-wrenching right there done so well when he's there in the bat wing and it's oh AI. yeah when he was in the in the panel yeah. yeah and the ai's talking to him but uh batman's imagining it's alfred like he's still alive he's still there man that was so sad yeah it was it was well done it actually threw me off for a little bit i didn't even realize it was like in black and white and the the corners were on the monitor like an old school tv it was a nice touch i was like what, what is alfred doing here but i missed that one yeah it's very subtle but executed so well 
And then, you know, the last thing I want to talk about is the Eradicator army. I think it's really cool how uh, Venditti has kind of gone into his, his Green Lantern roots. And, and the, the army is based in, a, in a, a race that the Green Lanterns are familiar with. But he's also digging into like his new Superman roots because he's doing that Superman giant to where these are, re- are descendants of Kryptonians. So the Eradicator went and found him and is like bred himself on a whole new army to, to destroy the Earth. I, I thought it was cool the way he did that. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea bringing the Daxamites into it, seeing some, maybe some, you know, Monel being probably the most famous Daxamite. And yeah, that's cool bringing them back. And then when he's holding Wonder Woman, he's like, you will do good to, you know, to breed more <laughs> Kryptonians. He's going to like suck the power out of her or whatever to create mm-hmm. more like superior Kryptonians because she doesn't have the weakness to, cri- to Kryptonite. So yeah, I thought it was really cool. And definitely like, What's going to give the Justice League a threat after they just fought, you know, all this cataclysmic stuff in Snyder's run? Well, you do an army of supermen. That's what you do. It's like, okay, I can see that. Because after everything they just fought in Snyder's run with all this universe ending stuff, you have to bring in a big threat. And he did a good job with just being like, let's just bring in an army of supermen. That'll be a good threat. And it, it's it's been interesting. So it is disappointing that he's leaving Justice League. I'm really enjoying the, the story. I love the tension between Jon Stewart and Batman. And I think he's doing a lot of good stuff with the characters. But I am really excited. I can't wait till we find out the, the identity of this project that he actually had to leave Justice League for. I think we're both crossing our fingers for Superman. But I, you know, Wonder Woman would be another good choice. Get, get Tamaki off that book. Yeah, I'm just... And it, basically, whatever Venditti's on there, I'll support. I just, I really hope it's Superman because it's just, it's been all, it's been a rough, uh, rough little while with Bendis on there, and to have some, uh, have some salvation with Venditti coming in would be very nice. I really hope he comes in and saves that book. Well, I'm rooting for you. I'm, I'm, I'm just rooting for myself because I know whatever it is, I am going to enjoy it. But Superman could definitely use it. He's, he's been treated bad so, so long now. Uh, Dylan, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Uh, not much. Just yeah, definitely. If you're looking for a good Venditti book, I'd say How Jordan the Green Lantern Corps and Hawkman are the uh, the two premier Venditti books that you should definitely check out. Absolutely, and, and read Exo Manowar from Valiant. That was the first comic book he ever published, or that was ever published in in uh, floppy format. It's one of the best runs you'll ever see. I think it's 56 issues of Exo Manowar, and it's what got his foot in the door at DC Comics. It is well earned because that was amazing run cool i'll definitely all right dylan Uh, sorry buddy i didn't mean to interrupt you (laughs) my bad all right dylan i'll let you i'll god damn it (laughs) all right dylan i'll talk to you later buddy see you man if you enjoyed this video please give it a like i would appreciate it very much it helps us attract more views for the channel subscribe for future commentary comic book news and reviews and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.